All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voices, let us sing. This first line of our opening hymn makes my spirit soar. Partly the tune, but mostly the words. After all, as Peter pointed out, they were written by St. Francis himself. And as I anticipated the feast of St. Francis this past week and the blessing of the animals to take place this evening, I've been ruminating on the animal kingdom and our place in it. I got to thinking about this hymn and I've been catching myself humming and whistling and muttering it under my breath all week. And I wonder, what if all the earth were a choir and literally could lift up its voice and sing? Well, because I love science almost as much as I love music and animals, let's get a little scientific for a minute. And apologies to all actual scientists whose immediate thought on what follows might be to remind me not to quit my day job. <laughs> what if all the creatures of our God and King were a choir, proportionately represented in the number of seats each life form could occupy? And because the world is so immense, our choir will have to be large. So let's make it a choir of, say, 10,000 voices. To comprise this hypothetical choir, let me point to a groundbreaking study published last spring in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences that offers a comprehensive estimate of the weight of every class of living creature on the planet. Using the study's numbers, my choir of 10,000 would include 8,200 voices from the plant world. Trees, moss, shrubs, flowers, weeds, you name it if it's green. 82% of the Earth's biomass is made up of plants. 1,300 more singers would be from the lovely world of bacteria, which account for 13% of life on Earth, waterborne on our bodies and buried deep in its soil. So after filling 9,500 seats out of 10,000 with plants and a little bacteria section, that leaves just 500 chairs for everybody else who's left. Because only 5% of the Earth's biomass is made up of insects, fish, birds, reptiles, mammals, and oh yeah, you and me. So out of those 500, only one seat can go to a human we only make up 0.01% of all the life on the planet. That's one ten thousandth of the Earth's living things. Okay, that's a lot of numbers, not to mention a very peculiar choir, mostly of plants, a few bacteria, just a handful of animals, and a single solitary human voice. Art, if you ever have a hard day directing your choirs, just imagine this choir full of trees and bacteria the choir of all creatures of our God and King. As the psalmist too imagines, let the whole earth resound and all that fills it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. But the study gives us a sobering perspective on our place in the world. We may be small in number, but as a species, we are unequivocally dominant. Included in the same study are some numbers representing the impact human life has had on our fellow creatures. And it's not pretty. According to the report, our 0.01% humanity has succeeded in destroying more than 80% of all wild animals since we showed up, which in the grand scheme was not that long ago. But rather than continue down a rabbit hole of sad facts, let's just pause for a moment to marvel. Marvel at the teeming diversity of life and at the relative obscurity of our place in the mix. And then we can marvel some more about the disproportionate power we possess to influence the Earth's balance and all that walks upon it, swims in its waters, mucks about in the soil, and flies overhead. In light of all this science, the poetry of the Genesis 2 creation story is not lost on me. Nor is the beauty of the magnificent and totally unique sculptured Reredos behind me. When I walked into this church for the very first time last April for a job interview, I knew this place was for me when I spotted an octopus behind the altar. 
I mean, is there another church in all Christendom that celebrates the expanse of God's creation by putting everything from raindrops and protozoa, a school of sardines and a mosquito, to an octopus and a moose and a gorilla, and from the United Nations symbol and a voting ballot, a man in barbed wire and the atomic symbol, to holy baptism and Pentecost and the Alpha and the Omega, all up behind the altar in one unified artwork. Friends, we have a vivid invitation every Sunday, right before our eyes, to reflect on the magnificence of the earth and of all its inhabitants. And we can even see where things are left out and reflect on the times we come from and the times we live in. We can realize how time is never standing still and we move along with it always invited to continue co-creating with God, participating in the creation one way or another, for the worse or for the better, towards its degradation or its restoration.